Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 76 for the 10th May 10th May So, we shall start with the elephant snake Snake Island So, there is two Beracta TB2s that, Oh sorry, it's not two, it's actually one uh, One Ukrainian Beracta TB2 that got shot down uh, yesterday in the afternoon, uh, this is by the Defense Ministry of Russia. So some of you guys I know uh, who are pro-Ukrainians uh, totally don't believe in the Defense Ministry of Russia's uh, reports and statements. Uh, so no Beretta TB2s got shot down over Snake Island. And uh, the Russians made yet another statement on the Snake Island. So they are not tripling down already. They are like foppling down. Uh, is, that, is that even an English word? Uh, so... I will just read uh, briefly what they say. So according to the Defense Ministry of Russia, they said that uh, they shot down this another TB2, which I just mentioned. So in total, they said the uh, Ukraine has lost 30 UAVs over three days, and nine of them is Beretta TB2. So they claim that this is a PR campaign by the Ukrainians to seize uh, the Snake Island on May 9th uh, of the damage, which is the uh, victory day. So they found another three more bodies uh, from the sea and uh, they were found by Russian servicemen, uh, soldiers uh, by the shore. So now they say they have 27 bodies of the Ukrainian Special Force and uh, fighters that were left behind at Snake Island. So I would love to see whether they have photos, photo evidence or video evidence of this because uh, it's easy to say you got so many bodies but uh, you haven't... Uh, the, Russian Defense Ministry haven't yet shown any uh, images yet of all these uh, bodies so you need to see them in order to even verify what they say so uh, in total they they claim that uh, Ukraine has lost three Sukhoi-24 and uh, one Sukhoi-27 around here and uh, three MI-8 and one MI-24 this uh, I have already reported uh, yesterday in the episode 4 of this snake island so in a way we are now in episode 5 so 6 more MI8 and MI24 helicopters were destroyed at the uh, art seas which is the air base uh, air base around here this, there's this air base here so for those that you have been wondering you know if the Ukrainians are launching uh, the air assault uh, from Romania no they have a perfectly fine air base here which they can uh, easily fly over, which is not really far away. It's only like, what, 100 kilometers? So they could fly there in like 5 minutes or 10 minutes. So it's not that far away. And uh, so no, no, no Romania is involved. Uh, Romania is not involved with uh, this operation. So they also insist that there is three uh, assault boat. They it's actually, they call it Centaur. Centaur assault boat uh, with marines on board that was destroyed. So they claim uh, this is a disaster disaster for Ukraine, and uh, this is like a falling down of this uh, operation. Moving on to Mikolai front, another TB two got shot down. So uh, I know this is getting ridiculous for the people even who are pro Ukrainian or pro Russian. Uh, this a lot of TB twos. So you can take uh, you, uh, Russia's word for it, or you can just uh, ignore them. So this was this this TB two is shot down over uh, Akan Helske, uh, Akan Helske, uh, which is in in Russian is actually Akan Gelskoye. So it's a totally uh, this this spelling looks nicer because there's an angel inside. Mm, Ak Angel Skoye. Oh, that sounds cool. So and um, there's also okay that's cavalry raid let's not go there yet uh there is no wait what happened so there is no changes uh in this entire front i don't think there is even fighting here this is, has been since april 28 and uh this is also april 28 i think all these are gonna be like i'm gonna delete them soon since uh we don't really have any indication that's that there is fighting around here 
There is also, so we are now at Kyrie Ray front. At Kyrie Ray, a Super 25 was shot down over uh, Shroke. So uh, this is just south of Kyrie Ray. And uh, just north, northeast of this uh, clam, this, this clam shell thingy. Which is not a clamshell, uh, this is just a mine uh, in place. I just, it just looks like a sh shellfish. Anyway, it was shot down around here. And there is also a MI-8 shot down over at D Novo Dimitrivka. So, a uh, helicopter sh getting shot down over here might indicate that the Ukrainians might be trying to land forces behind enemy lines uh, in order to do sabotage or, you know, commando raids or maybe to... Uh, disrupt uh supply lines there is a possibility so which is why we see a mi8 and it's unlikely that uh us uh, the helicopter is uh operating alone so there's, there might be a few helicopters uh involved in this operation one of them got shot down the rest either they have escaped or they have continued in their mission and landed troops behind enemy lines so i think this is possible and there is no news regarding these operations, this fighting. So this is also a bit overdue now. Uh, the the front line here is very stagnant. Uh, there is, according to the Ministry of Def Ministry of Defense of Russia, they are claiming that uh, Ukraine 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 is trying to set up some uh, some false flag uh, at Bila Kanisia. I I'm not indicating this because uh, usually this kind of things once you call it out, it's not going to happen. Uh, so so but i just saying that uh this is something that's happening now they uh, according to the russian they say they are launching uh some artillery strike at the U russian positions from this position in the residential area and they actually have uh trying to get a counter fire from the russians and then they have the press i think from the french or something or belgium or can't, i can't remember uh getting ready to you know shoot and film all these uh humanitarian disaster uh but ultimately like i said at the moment the russians russians call it out it doesn't happen anymore uh just like many of these uh, other incidents like that that's supposed to happen according to the russians at Mikolaev, at kurson or whatever every time the russian call it out uh it never happens so so that's just that so moving on to the zaporizhia line heavy fighting reported at ori Kiev. Uh, at Huyaipo and uh, I think I think maybe Malinivka I think I and uh, there's I think there's uh, in Shabaki the, uh, it, there's just heavy fighting along the entire front uh, however it seems like it's just mainly artillery battles it doesn't seem like there's any maneuver warfare involved maybe just skirmishes exchanging of fires just to keep ev everyone uh, awake and not so bored and fall asleep so uh that's that's about it moving on to uh donets front on the donets front there's no updates on uh, mariopo except that uh the ukrainians claiming that uh the russians are storming azov style and uh apparently there's around almost 1000 fighters uh, around seeming uh this i saw this information from uh, pro russian sources and um and there are hundreds of uh, casualties that means injured people uh, among the defenders so anyway all these numbers uh, they just seems to be picking up from the sky uh, because i'm there's supposed to be hundreds or even a thousand civilians and we only got like less than 200 so i'm not going to trust all these numbers moving on to donate's front uh, there is still no confirmation of, of all these uh captures so i'm going to now officially uh discount them as uh not true so i'm going to delete this in front of you and i'm going to push back uh push back this so so now you see it okay so this is uh invalidated not true but there is fighting at palifka some there are some say Palifka is captured, but I really don't think so. Um, not from the sense of how I, how accurate information seems to be uh, propagated uh, through the social media. So it doesn't seem to be true. Uh, there is some 
a uh, chatter saying that there are some slight progress at the Adivka from the Russian side, but no clear or specific information. So it's a kind of pointless. No updates regarding uh, the, the northern part of Adivka. And there's no more updates here on the Donetsk front. In the Luhansk front, uh, okay, so the according to the Russian Defense Ministry, uh, the Russian forces have now arrived at the administrative border of Luhansk People's Republic, which is why the border now is pushed all the way to this line here, which is where the uh, the border of Luhansk is. And uh, according to the statement, they say that the People's Militia, uh, supported by the Armed Forces of Russian Federation, have completed the mop-up of Popasna. That means they have already conquered. And they broke through the deeply enchilon, uh enemy, enemy defense and reached the administrative border of Luhansk People's Republic. So previously, there is actually a three, there is actually three defense line, uh, uh, three fortifications, as you can see. Uh, no, go back. Why would that guy come up, come up? Okay, so anyway, there's supposed to be three. And uh, I already wiped them out uh, because of this uh, progress that is being reported. Uh, however, this southern part uh, clusters of uh, defenses is likely to be still there. I think it's going to take some time before it will be cleared up. Uh, but it's not looking good for the Ukrainian forces to continue to stay in this region. I think they should pull back and... Uh, you know, reorganize their defense around Bakhmut. Uh, that would make a lot more sense than uh, to stay here and die. Moving on to further north, there is no update at uh, Zolote. There is no update on or Orikhov and Toshkivka. This Toshkivka. So Toshkivka. Mekin Toshkivka. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, not funny. Okay, moving on to uh, several Donets. Uh, this one is actually from yesterday. I forgot to report. Uh, MiG-29 was shot down over Severo Donetsk. So, so just to you know, uh, this one, I owe you this information. There is no update about this. Uh, this fighting at Vajero, uh, Vajevo Divka has uh, kind of invalidated because no updates on this. However, there is still some information, uh, some claims that Zarya plant is still fighting. And uh, I just want to let you know first, I'm not indicating it yet because it's very hard to verify such information. Um, tentatively, I'm going to still count it as the uh, Russians has taken it. Uh, but we will see as we go on for another day or two, uh, especially tomorrow, we'll be able to tell if they continue to claim that Zarya plant is still fighting. Uh, the the claim that there was fighting at Pudivka has disappeared as well. Uh, there's no information about that. Uh, moving on to on the north northwest side of uh, Sobero Donetsk and Lysychansk, uh, the the Russians still yet to have a breakthrough in any of these towns here, and and the claims that uh, there is some claims that Bilohorivka has been captured. However, there is also claimed that the Russian forces at Bolohorivka has been totally repelled. And repelled so badly that some of the soldiers uh, is reportedly swimming across the river to get away. So it really depends on what story you want to believe. Uh, the pro, some of the pro-Russian ones say they have captured. And uh, some, then the, some of the pro-Ukrainian ones say uh, they have totally destroyed this force. So uh, whatever you want to believe. Uh, there is this the pontoon one of the pontoon crossing was discovered uh, by CNN, and and this the location seems to be around here, and uh, it does make a lot of sense because there's a road here, so they have the another road here following down. They just go through, cross a pontoon bridge here, and then they have a perfectly fine road that they can use to uh, to rush all the way down to below Horivka, and uh, I think this do make sense however uh, this position might be also the pontoon bridge that was destroyed uh, however the photo that i saw of a uh, destroyed pontoon bridge uh, it was zooming so much that it's not possible to actually geolocate uh, but it does look a little bit like this one uh, so just to let you have some visualization on uh so below Horifka is here the 
from two crossings here so that does make some sense so uh not that it's very uh, important on the strategic sense uh because this is very tactical uh at dpa's reporting here we are looking at the strategic picture so uh this is just some edit additional information that you might be interested in um apparently this so now we are at Izum front uh apparently this little town of ozeni uh is proving so hard to capture there there's still no information about its capture yet and uh liman continue to be resistant no info no updates on drobo shift the the, the real of nova uh nova Selifka. and this jungle area uh continue to burn that i think there's some forest fire of sort i think uh, causing some problems with uh, the progress no information about uh kapivka <clears throat> or this possible encirclement but uh, the lack of uh talk about this encirclement might indicate that uh, there is actually no encirclement of troops over there um there is still no news about this thousand men um some there's a commenter say say that oh that is the people who just who escaped to uh Seat, uh Seatovsk. and uh i replied uh because the claim was they actually marched 12 kilometers which was hardly enough to reach the reservoir which is why i do not agree with the assessment it's more likely that those troops actually was uh defeated at yakivka and Rup C, and they actually retreated through the forest down to Seattle's is unlikely to be the same force and the units that was uh reported in that redrawal versus the unit that was reported to be trapped is actually different unit so don't argue with me about this kind of thing i uh you need to watch every day to you know to really you know have a sense of what is happening so when i see some of the comments it's really hard to uh -huh, very hard to reply because it's not like i didn't report on it so so i'm not sure maybe some of the viewers uh, just came up came came to this channel you know for the first few times and then they start to think that they uh i have not reported certain things uh so but i know it's nearly impossible to go back to watch maybe the even the last 10 episodes that will probably take you eight hours or six seven six hours uh read that will become a full-time job for you so i don't think that's practical and there is no update about all these places the the this rumor about the capture of Bavinkov is likely to be not true so i'm going to delete this in front of you as well uh and I, in fact even this fighting on the outskirt uh i'm just going to take it with a pinch of salt because for me if you if the russians have not even captured uh, dmitrivka or vinopilia or nova dmitrivka i don't think they are able to fight all the way at Pavinkov. it just don't make a lot of sense and the lack of capture at redney uh redney which i've been monitoring for some time uh there is no information it still seems to be under ukrainian control so i don't think this is true so i just want to let you know the this this pointy pointy point here um Take it with a pinch of salt i don't think this is true but i'm just going to leave this here just in case however the capture of Bavinkov, i don't think is true because this is such a major major town and uh if there is fighting it's going to become like liman it's going to become like liman where the fighting will going to take a, a week or two at least to get over so and to not capture peshkov as well i just think this is just a bunch of nonsense so However, there is a Sukhoi 25 getting shot down over Nova uh, Dimitrivka. This is from May 9. So, not sure if I have reported this. So, anyway, I'm just going to report it again, just in case. And now, moving on to the happy front for the pro Ukrainian crowd. At the happy front, uh, I can confirm that the uh, Korobosh uh, Kaine, which previously I was, I had not indicated this under Ukrainian uh, control. I have now indicated it as under Ukrainian because there are multiple tweets reporting Russian troops shouting uh, uh, Koroboshk kind. So, which is why uh, I have put it now, I give them the flag and uh, this is now under Ukrainian control. So, so because I have, I have been wondering about this place for some time, but there wasn't any information until this point. So, this is now the front line and there is definitely uh, Russian troops 
uh, blocking this path here uh, and not like the front on the north at the north of Kharkiv where where the Russian troops are behaving like ice cream so you know when you hold it then the ice cream start to melt uh, that seems like what the Russian troops uh, in the north of Kharkiv seems to be uh, here is less of ice cream they are more like a, um, rice I don't know um, or bread so the ice cream forces here continue to melt away as the Ukrainians capture Ternova. Uh, this is this is confirmed by uh, Ukraine map, and they have captured Lipsy and uh, Pythomine. How to how do you pronounce this? Pythomine. Pythomine. I just gonna call it uh, Pythomine. Uh, so they have captured these three towns, and. Of significant is the capture of Ternova because with the capture of Ternova, the Ukrainian forces have reached the international border between Ukraine and Russia on the Kharkiv side. So this is a this is a significant uh, achievement, and uh, we should give uh, the Ukrainian forces a round of applause. Okay, so well done, uh, Ukrainian forces defeating the ice cream force uh, here. However, there is still some uh, very frozen ice cream at Kozocha Lopan and uh, it remains to be seen uh, what is the Russians trying to do. Uh, this melting away uh, does seems to uh, remind me of, of a lot of the Kiev and uh, Shenehiv Sumi front, the northern front, where, where the purpose seems to be just to distract the Ukrainian forces, which I did mention this long long time ago that instead of uh distracting the ukrainian forces over such a huge front where it's very hard to defend uh they continue to hold this front because i did mention uh, maybe a month ago that the U russians doesn't seem interested to actually attack kharkiv uh which is why i have already hypothesized that the russians are only using kharkiv to uh to hold up ukrainian forces but it seems like either they are giving up because they do not need uh, to hold any more forces around here or it could be that they are no longer able to hold up uh, the, the accumulation of uh, forces at Kharkiv front which is why they have to now uh, retreat and melt away back into Russian territory uh, to prevent uh, a total collapse of their forces in this area or they have already total collapsed uh, depending on uh, how lousy you want to think the Russian forces are uh, my personal feeling is that uh, it's less likely of a total collapse but it's more like uh, the Russians have has assessed that they are no longer able to hold this front uh, against a uh, overwhelming Ukrainian force which is why they have to retreat back into their border and probably uh, dare the Ukrainians to actually in invade into the Russian territory which I personally do not think the Ukrainians will do it uh, because if they would they will have already invaded through Sumi or through the Shenevkiv area, but they did not uh, incur, incur into the Russian land, then I do not expect them to do it the same at the Kharkiv front. So, this is the update uh, on on uh, the day of uh, 76, 10 of May. This is a summary. Uh, not a long one because uh, there's not a lot of things had happened. So, uh, oh no, I forgot to tell you guys to press the like button. So, uh, so please, please press the like button and I'll see you in the next update.